Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Wednesday, the 22nd of November. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. Specifically, Morning Prayer All Saints to Advent. You'll find it in the eponymously titled book, towards the beginning in the morning and evening prayer, during the seasons section, after prayer during the day, Common Worship Daily Prayer. Online at the Church's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building, if you're technologically minded. It's the same time, 8 and 6, Saturday to... Uh, or Tuesday to Saturday, um, by Zoom, codes on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. Facebook, we live stream and uh, on Blythe Valley Churches and uh, stays there for a month. The audio will be in my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently <coughs> and uh, it stays there forever. Uh, if you are following in the book, it's commemoration of Cecilia, 22nd November, halfway through amongst the Saints' Days and Festivals, will take you to any uh, adjustments to the standard All Saints Advent running order. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you, they make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence which the saints enjoy surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. First some verses of Psalm 42, presented as a song of trust in God. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks for the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <coughs> the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on a fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the Psalms appointed this morning, Numbers 56 and 57, you'll find them at the back of the book. Psalms 5, 6 and 5, 7. In God I trust and will not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample over me all the day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. <coughs> in God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? All day long they wound me with words, their every thought is to do me evil. They stir up trouble, they lie in wait. Marking my steps they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O God, casts the peoples down. You have counted up my groaning, Put my tears into your bottle, are they not written in your book? Then shall my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon you. This I know, for God is on my side. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear what can flesh do to me. <coughs> to you, O God, will I fulfil my vows. To you will I present my offerings of thanks. For you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In God I trust, and will not fear. A 
Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge, until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. <coughs> he will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those who would, that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. <coughs> they have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake my soul, awake harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. <coughs> I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the New Creation, turning back in our books to morning prayer, All Saints to Advent. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <coughs> Cecilia was one of the most revered martyrs of the Roman Church, but the only thing known for certain is that at some point in the 2nd or 3rd century, a woman called Cecilia allowed the church to meet in her house in Trastevere, in the city of Rome, and that subsequently the church erected on that site bore her name. She was remembered as a brave woman who risked giving hospitality to the Christian church when to do so was to court censure and possibly death. According to a tradition that can be dated no earlier than the 5th century, she converted her pagan husband and his brother to the faith, both of whom were martyred before her. She is honoured as the patron saint of musicians. <coughs> so to Isaiah 10, from 20 to 32, our first Bible reading, other than what we've used liturgically in, in the Psalms already. Isaiah 10, 20 to 32. Isaiah uh, opens the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures, so if you've got a Holy Bible with both covenants in it, <coughs> first, second, Jewish, Greek, call it what you will, uh, halfway through you'll find the Psalms move towards the back, and uh, you should find Isaiah opening the prophecy section. Within the book of Isaiah, we'll look at the large number 10 in the margin, the paragraph head, number 10, chapter 10, and the small numbers within the verses, within the text, sorry, the smallest within the text are the verses. I'm looking for verses 20 to 32 in the chapter 10 in the book of Isaiah. Scroll back to it if you're following online. On that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean on the one who struck them, but will lean on the Lord, <clears throat> the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God, for though your people Israel will like the sound of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed, overflowing with righteousness, for the Lord, God of hosts, will make a full end as decreed in all the earth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrians when they beat you with a rod and lift up their staff against you as the Egyptians did, for in a very little while my indignation will come to an end and my anger will be directed to their destruction. The Lord, God of hosts, the Lord of hosts will wield a whip against them as when he struck Midian at the rock of Kreb, Oreb. His staff will be over the sea and he will lift it as he did in Egypt on that day. His burden will be removed from your shoulder and his yoke will be destroyed from your back, from your neck. He has gone up from Arimon, he has come to Ayath, he has passed through Migron at Michmash, he stores his baggage, they have crossed over the pass at Geba, they lodge for the night, Rama, Rama trembles, Gibir of Saul has fled, cry aloud, O daughter Galim, listen, O Laish, Laisha, answer her, O Anathoth, Madden, Mena is in flight, the inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety this very day, he will halt at Nob, he will shake his fist at the, daughter, Mount, at the Mount of Daughter Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. <coughs> <coughs> a 
So, um, as we have discovered, as we read the prophets, <coughs> we have to read it quite carefully to decide, discover who it is that the prophet is writing against. <coughs> and whilst the three different sections of Isaiah do um, are quite declamatory against God's own people, <coughs> they also speak against surrounding nations and indeed against the oppressor. <coughs> and uh, here we're effectively being comforted as God's people, Christians grafted into the Jewish tradition. So this is written by and to Jews, of course, around the time of the exile. But we can read it, and as it says, the troubles that we face at the moment are basically fleeting. Um, the idea for Jeremiah is that God's people did wrong, and so God is using this foreign empire to teach them a lesson, to destroy what they um, clung to and sought sanctuary in and a security in that will be destroyed and taken away, but a remnant will be restored. But then having used that foreign empire, that foreign army, the circumstance the circumstance itself will be overthrown. <clears throat> and uh, so we might find ourselves, um, say, in prison after being caught doing something or other, which maybe we've done all our lives, but we've just been caught doing it. It might be, if you like, our fault. It might be the community's fault. I don't know, we haven't been fed, so we had to steal a loaf of bread, whatever it might be. <clears throat> um, we might have been coerced or whatever, manipulated. However, we're in prison. We have an opportunity then to review our lives, and then the prison sentence comes to end and we're restored hopefully change people um, and uh, we can lead a new life and all those things we lost through whatever it was that we've been doing that we shouldn't have been doing um, we are then able to be restored to in the fairy tale scenario and that's kind of what's going on here and then the last paragraph which is a bit of like poetry verse <clears throat> a bit of homework you could see if we could find out where those places are and list them and I imagine there is sort of a, a route presumably down from the north of the country down to uh, Jerusalem various places where cities and towns have been uh, overwhelmed. They're either places within um, what would then have been called Israel and Judah, or um, there are places beyond as other nations around are overwhelmed, overcome by um, the Babylonian Empire, <coughs> or the Assyrians, if they're not the same thing. <coughs> and uh, perhaps we can interpret that as seeing the signs coming that we need to sort ourselves out. But it does say that God's wrath stops at uh, Babylon, so maybe this is that mopping up operation afterwards as we're being restored and we can see God's rescue, God's plan of salvation unfolding before us. So to Matthew 8, 1 to 13, our second Bible reading, scroll onto it online uh, in a Bible. Matthew is the first of the four Gospels that open the second covenant, so if you open your Bible two-thirds of the way through, that's the split between the Jewish and the Greek material. Move towards the back, uh, and within the book of Matthew, you'll find chapter number 8, large number at the margin, the head of the paragraph, chapter 8, and then the small numbers in the text. Again, the verses 1 to 13, Matthew 8, from 1 to 13. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great cloud crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose to be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. <coughs> <coughs> when he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralysed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. Can my slave do this? And the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <clears throat> and to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. <clears throat> So we've got two outsiders that Jesus heals. Quite different stories, but both remarkable. One, Jesus touches the leper, and as a rabbi, um, he shouldn't have touched somebody with leprosy. The person with leprosy shouldn't even have been in community, <coughs> but they were. And it's one of the significant differences between the Jewish understanding, or at least the Christian Jewish understanding, and the sort of, if you like, standard Orthodox Jewish understanding that um, God doesn't need to be kept safe from. Uh, dirt, germs, wrongdoing, <coughs> um, rather um, God clears out dirt, germs, wrongdoing 
as God breaks out in, with purifying power. A bit like light and darkness. Darkness will not overcome light. Light overcomes darkness. In that traditional expression, of course, if you switch a light out, if evening comes, light is extinguished. But, you know, it's a saying, light at the end of the tunnel and all that. So, um, whereas the understanding was that we had to keep um, disabled people, women, foreigners, away from um, the icon demonstration, representation of God's presence on earth in the temple, with only one high priest going once a year, attached a bit of string so we can pull them out if they fall down dead in the power of God, under the power of God, or unconscious or whatever. Actually, Jesus, um, as we know from the Gospel writers, the temple curtain is torn in two, so actually God's power presence floods out and is amongst us, rather than us going in and extinguishing the power of God. So that's interesting. We as church should allow people in. that Society doesn't, as it is society allows people in. The church doesn't, so may God be merciful. So to the, uh, res- the, the next um, paragraph, we're talking about a foreigner. Uh, here, it wasn't um, somebody um, trying to escape persecution and coming to England in a boat with 20 or so other people. Um, this foreigner is um, an overlord, so it would perhaps be like um, a Nazi in um, occupied France, <coughs> a Nazi soldier who actually has faith and actually has compassion for the people. So in France, it's not quite the same, but in um, the Middle East, within Jerusalem at that time, the predominant faith would have been Judaism. That would have been potentially others, so the Romans would have had their faith. But it's a different faith, uh, it's a different ethnicity, so perhaps like Northern Ireland, where um, there's sort of certain tribes were Roman Catholic, as well as had their, having their Protestant English-oriented ethnicity. Then the other tribes were predominantly uh, Roman Catholic with their um, Irish ethnicity and uh, orientation. Um, but this foreigner who's wrong religion, wrong ethnicity, asks Jesus to help recognises with humility that the Jews should not enter into the Gentiles' property. I'm not worthy to have you, that's the way around he puts it, which is really dear. But I'm a man of authority, just give the order and it will happen. And Jesus is overwhelmed and the healing happens. So we can pray for somebody and they can be healed remotely. Um, We need to be ready for people who are apparently not Christian, as this person was apparently not Jewish to actually have belief and faith, perhaps even more than those we have in our everyday congregation. So it's not just somebody who's outside, who doesn't attend, but this is somebody who, in terms of our prejudice, in terms of the norm, would be antagonistic, even uh, brutally violently disposed towards us and our faith. Think of, uh, what is his name, Ananias being told to go and talk to Paul after he'd heard that Paul was actually out there to persecute him. But God had sorted it out, so let us be ready for the unexpected. To the responsory back in morning prayer, all saints to Advent. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The Song of Zechariah. You will guide them, guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. (coughs) This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. <clears throat> and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, <clears throat> for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Source, Son, Essence, one in three, three in one. 
we come to you at the beginning of this day <clears throat> and we thank you for reassuring us that whatever might befall us, it will only be temporary. And we pray that you'll help us to uh, understand our circumstance and your part in it and uh, give us the patience and the courage to face the times of trial. And we thank you for your promise that they will be brought to an end. <clears throat> And we also thank you that we were once outsiders when we were still far off. You met us and your son and brought us home. We pray that we likewise will be open to the other. <coughs> I pray that uh, my denomination <coughs> will recognise the image of God in all people and uh, <coughs> comply with the law of the land in relation to human rights and equal opportunities and the rest sooner rather than later, whilst we recognise the conscience of some, that that is unacceptable. World Council of Churches prayers for Timor-Leste, Indonesia and the Philippines this week. We are thankful for the diversity of ethnicities, culture and religious beliefs, especially those in Indonesia who have built bridges between them. And we pray for victims of violence, torture, drug and human trafficking and human rights violations, that those responsible might be held accountable. <coughs> Christian Action Research and Education, we pray for people with dementia who are also experiencing depression, anxiety and apathy. Please encourage family members and carers as they try to improve their life quality, help them to engage with others who seek to comfort and reassure them in your mercy. <coughs> Green Christian. <coughs> Looking for today's entry. Critical tasks facing negotiators in Dubai at COP28 include getting the loss and damage fund established, uh, which was set up in 20, or talked about in 27, and agreeing on the framework of the Paris Agreement Global Goal on Adaptation, other issues that would like to receive much attention and which may be reflected across several negotiating streams, including energy transition, food systems, transformation. As is often the case, discussions and negotiations on climate finance are likely to be at centre stage. We pray for all those civil servants and negotiators who have been active and will be active in the run-up to the um, heads of state or whoever it is who turn out to make those final sort of signing, signing off at the bottom of the page. We pray for real change and the determination for that to be established on this occasion. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern and action for the environment, and Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes, bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. I benefit I prayer on Wednesday to pray for teachers, and uh, so we do, both those who uh, help and encourage pupils in schools, but also uh, children and uh, grown-ups in uh, independent living, <coughs> in staying safe, in skills and crafts, wider curriculum, if not extracurriculum activities. We pray that uh, those teachers will have the support, the encouragement in terms of other staff members of uh, what they need to fulfil their teaching, so their sort of classroom, if you like, their kit, and that their terms and conditions will be adequate, that they'll have to be encouraged themselves as they see those they teach uh, improving, increasing their skills and abilities, uh, even to the point perhaps where they surpass those who are teaching them. <coughs> and we thank you for our people. We pray today for the church wardens looking after the Holton, Weniston, Bramfield, Blythe, Thorrington churches of St. Peter, St. Peter, St. Andrew, All Saints and St. Peter. Uh, they are John and Chris, Jonathan, <coughs> Ginny, Alison and Mike. We have names of others on the rolls at Holton. Jill, Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Joan, Gillian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Jim and Jackie, and at Weniston will include Alison, also the Margaret's Bloomfield, Goldsmith, Goldston, Anthony, Mary, Moore, Francis, Frank, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Cyril, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, David, Diana, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Francis, Anne and Colin. Pray for those that would be on the rolls or are on the rolls and the others, I just don't have them to hand, that they will know your healing, your provision, uh, your salvation your deliverance and your encouragement 
your enabling. May they study, may they serve, may they worship uh, to the glory of your name. And we pray that you draw others into those PCCs with uh, the capacity to help us, wardens, treasurers, and secretaries, that you may choose between those who offer themselves that uh, the offer that the church makes to those communities will grow as uh, they are become increasingly used as a public space for art exhibitions, for music, for consolation, for quietness, for worship, for exploration of all that it means to be human. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pahashandiri ma khunuk shadeh mehrabas pufujan sarabah jibara hasa miya khuytari ba shayati la mashbas yamas baro hashem mazalay. Jahidiyan ma khunam bushur rabash baro maz baro hama sudha khadiya ba yaba sabara ya bish mahati irahana as malakash. Shafu shadeh ya khunra bah baro maz mahata ba yakash dara bara bas mahara mishu sana arkadi ya brash. Jahidiyan ma khunra bish mitinan as baro bas baro hada shma sarabah hada ya mahsi khadi ya lamas fa. Fahashu sana ma khubara ya bayi madara hada ya khujan ya rabi yuhu azmiya bish mahsi ya hana as baro bas. Chukurana Baron, the Abash Barama, the Hushan Salute, and the Khatiba, the Abash Baduma, the Abash Salama Zara. And Kayo Demi Rebesh Barama Yodas, Nara had a Masbaroma called Rana Hadash Mahari Masbaroma. Near what Rana Kaniba, a Masbaran, your house, a Masbaro Hadashan Salakani, Bretta Fair. Shukushani, the Masbaramas, no more so Hadish Matiakira Hashalati, and Rana Hadash Masani Ferran. Shukhana Spirin by Padilas, Nara Paku Hanapaka, Hadash Pedimidian as Maramanos. <coughs> the Collect for All Saints season. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtues and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube. And